Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user Throwaray Sil Tester. Am I the A-hole for laughing in my sister-in-law's face when she DNA tested my daughter? I, 30 male, have a daughter who's 6. I am not biologically related to her at all. There is no blood relation between us. I was friend with her mother for most of all my childhood. We were never involved romantically and we're always just friends. She had her daughter at 23 with her 25 year old husband. When my daughter was a newborn, about 3 months technically, both her mother and father were killed. I won't go into too much detail for privacy reasons, but it was a workplace shooting. My friend and her husband had worked in the same building and were both killed. Both my friend and her husband had grown up with less than ideal families and didn't have any siblings, so there wasn't any next of kin for their daughter to go to. However, because I was close with them, I was able to adopt her. Even though I had been iffy about the idea of kids, I didn't want their daughter to grow up in foster care or around people who didn't have a connection to her bio parents, so I stepped in. My parents and siblings know that my daughter is not my actual daughter, biologically speaking. My daughter, I'll call Lily for the post, also knows that she's adopted. I never really hid the fact that she was adopted. She knows her parents are dead and were killed by a bad man, but I'm saving the details for when she's older. Lily does not look like me at all. She looks exactly like her mother and biological dad. Most people assume that I'm her bio dad and that she just took after her mom. I don't ever really correct this when people assume this because it just seems unnecessary. Now, my brother has been with his fiance for about two years now. A few weeks ago, we were all meeting up at my parents' house and my sister-in-law saw an old picture of me, my friend and her husband. She pointed to my friend and asked who she was and I explained that was Lily's mother. Sister-in-law got quiet and stood in front of the picture for a while. I didn't think much of it. To clarify, she knows my friend died, but I guess didn't know that she had been married or that Lily is not my bio daughter. I suppose she assumed my daughter was mine and my friend's biological daughter. Anyway, my sister-in-law got a DNA test done on my daughter behind my back. She used my brother's DNA for the test and when it came back that they weren't related, she knew that it meant me and Lily weren't related. Then, she came up to me with the results and waved them in my face, saying that I was taking care of a dead woman's affair baby. She said this to me in front of my daughter. I just stared at her for a while before bursting out laughing at this. I told her I knew Lily wasn't my biological daughter and that this thing called adoption exists. Her face went red and she stormed off. My brother is mad I embarrassed his fiance, but I said she embarrassed herself by DNA testing a kid that isn't hers and then parading the results up to me. What did she want me to do? What was her goal with this? Did she want me to break down and abandon my daughter? My brother said she thought she was doing the right thing and called me an a-hole. I don't feel like the a-hole, especially considering my sister-in-law was the one who stuck her nose where it doesn't belong. I'm asking for reddit opinions, mostly just for validation. So was I the a-hole? No OP, of course you're definitely not the a-hole. There's only two clear a-holes here, your sister-in-law and your brother. Your sister-in-law for obvious reasons, I mean she took DNA from your daughter to test her behind your back and then she waved the results in your face like she had achieved something or whatever. I don't really understand what she was trying to do there. Like you were gonna drop down on your knees and say thank you, thank you for clearing this up, it's been eating me alive for years. What an idiot. And your brother is an a-hole because he's angry at you because you embarrassed his fiance. But like you said, she embarrassed herself. Now your brother could be a double a-hole if he actually knew what his fiance was doing. Because then he'd be an a-hole to her as well. I mean, he could have told her. She's not his biological daughter, we all know this. But anyways OP, you are not the a-hole, this is not your issue anymore, this is something that your brother needs to resolve with his fiance. So the only thing I would focus on if I was you is if Lily is okay because this whole show happened in front of her. And what is your opinion regarding this whole thing? Let me know in the comment section and now let's check out the community comments. 
Serenati says, not the a-hole. She wanted to stir some crap up. That's a hell of a lot of effort to help. Also, I'd be pissed about how she got Lily's DNA to do this. It didn't go the way she thought it would, so she got mad. Your brother is just trying to side with his soon-to-be wife. Broke Wing says, your brother is marrying an evil, manipulative, sadistic piece of work with no soul. She had no right to do that. It's not her business. You should be deeply offended. That was aggressive. She meant to do harm to you and your child. She might not be consciously aware of it, but that is what it was. Your brother is making his bed and will lie in it if he chooses. One day, she will do something similar to him and he will need you in his corner. Too bad for him. You can't talk sense into him, but you can refuse to have anything to do with that C-word bitch. KitKat935 says, I need to add this. She did this in front of your daughter to maximize the damage she thought she was exposing. That is straight evil. And Shroom Cure says, Your brother is a nothing moron if he can't see that there's something very wrong with her. He deserves the misery she will bring into his life as long as he continues to defend her. Be careful. Her embarrassment may turn nasty. Keep her away from you and your daughter. Additional information from Opie's comments. I can see how she assumed that we were together. In the picture my sister-in-law was looking at, I had my arms around Lily's mother's shoulder. This was before my friend was married to her husband. At the time that picture was taken, they were just friends. I believe she did one of those home DNA kits, though I don't know what company they did it through. Also, I'm doing my best to raise Lily with the values and beliefs her mother and bio dad had and wanted to raise her with, even if some of them differed a bit from my own. So the community agrees that OP is not the a-hole and that the sister-in-law may be evil and OP also clarified why he thinks the sister-in-law was confused regarding the picture. So now let's move on to the first of two updates to see what happened next. My sister-in-law ended up coming to my house and apologizing, as well as telling me the full story. My brother put her up to the DNA test. When I first adopted Lily, my brother for some reason believed that Lily was my bio daughter. He thought that me and Lily's mom were together and just weren't telling anyone. He believes that when she got pregnant, Lily's mom told me that Lily was mine and that she was going to just say it was her husband's and I went along with it because I didn't really want kids. Sister-in-law was under the impression I believed I was Lily's bio dad. She saw the picture of Lily's mom and I and after asking for clarification on who she was, assumed we were together in it and then got suspicious when she saw that the other guy in the picture, Lily's actual bio dad, looked a lot like Lily. I also want to clarify, I didn't tell her that Lily's bio dad was in the picture because she had specifically pointed to Lily's mom and I assumed she knew that Lily was adopted. I didn't know my brother had been telling her lies for nearly two years. She got the DNA test out of her own suspicions and my brother helped her with it because he thought it would reveal that I was actually Lily's bio dad. He manipulated her into thinking that it would clear the air of suspicion when really he was just trying to prove that I was really Lily's bio dad and lying about the reasons for adoption. Well, of course the results proved I wasn't Lily's bio dad and that my brother was wrong. My brother felt too embarrassed to confess to his fiancée that he had lied about the circumstances, which is why my sister-in-law confronted me with the results. My sister-in-law also apologized for showing me the results in front of my daughter. She told me that her mom had an affair and cheated on her father, got pregnant with another man's kid and had let her father believe the kid was his. Her father was devastated by this when he found out and she grew very resentful of women who do that to their spouses. She had wanted to sit me down and talk to me about it without my daughter, but when she saw me with my daughter, she got angry thinking I was being led on to believe I was raising my daughter when I was actually raising another man's kid and she ended up exploding and immediately waved the results in my face. My sister-in-law does feel very guilty and she's angry at my brother for lying to her. I'm not angry at her for doing the test because she thought she was doing the right thing. I also forgave her for the way she told me about the results because clearly affairs are a sensitive subject for her and I can understand why she would have exploded like that. I'm also pretty sure she plans to break up with my brother now and I don't blame her. 
When I called and asked my brother about this, he admitted it. When I asked why he would think this, he said that he couldn't think of a reason why a man who had been against having kids at the time would willingly adopt a baby without having a blood connection to it. He told sister-in-law that I was Lily's bio dad and was aware of the fact. He took it a step further and said that me and Lily's mom were together at the time of Lily's conception. Some people were saying I should sue and or press charges on my sister-in-law. I don't want to do that. I'm not mad at her because I know she was manipulated into doing this by my brother and I don't want to deal with the hassle. I honestly just want to put this whole thing behind me and move on. Both me and my parents are going low contact with my brother for a while now. I know I will forgive my brother eventually, but I can't do that right now. And yes, I know I probably should go no contact with him, but he is still my brother and I do want to give him a chance to make things better in the future. I can admit that I'm definitely a lot softer since becoming a father. Adopting my daughter made me have to finally be mature, something I wasn't in my 20s when I adopted her. I wouldn't say he's remorseful currently. He acted very defensive and was firm in how he believed he was in the right. Okay, so now the tables have turned and the huge a-hole of the story is Opie's brother. Now, considering that the sister-in-law was triggered into telling Opie the way she did, do you think that excuses her from doing it in front of the daughter? Let me know in the comment section about that and now let's move on to the final update to see how the story ends. Some people were wondering what happened with my brother and sister-in-law. Well, she dumped him. They tried to make it work but that only lasted a few days and she ended up giving him the ring back. As a result, my brother got crap faced drunk on my front lawn in the middle of the night. I was pissed because Lily had school the next morning and this woke her up. My brother was yelling insults to both me and my daughter. We called the police and he spent the night in jail for drunken disturbance. I believe the official charge was something like that. I sure as hell pressed charges because he was saying some borderline threatening statements to me and my daughter. I don't think it's enough to qualify for a restraining order, but if it is, I'll get a temporary one. On a more positive note, Lily is doing well. She's getting straight A's in every subject and is excited about her first ever science project. She's been talking my ear off about it. Send help, lol. Well, OP, I guess your brother won his stupid prize. And I would also urge you to reconsider going no contact with him because he's definitely not safe to be around for your daughter or yourself. So on that note, I'm just gonna wish you and Lily the best in the future OP. Thanks so much for sharing and take care. And now let's move on to the next post that also has an update. This post is from the subreddit entitled People and it's by user GameNerd93. My small town is fighting over Chinese food. I live in a small town, population 7,000 roughly, and everyone is currently divided over a Chinese restaurant. It's been in the local news and Australian national news. That's how crazy people are getting. Back in May of this year, a local Chinese restaurant owner informed the local club he was renting kitchen space from that he wanted to retire. Gave them his resignation, stating his last operating day would be the end of June. Cue the local Karens and Kevins in mass. One local, who we will call Big Kevin, teamed up with another local, who we will call Mega Karen, and they decided they were going to protest against the closing and force the club to keep the restaurant open. This poor man has been running the restaurant for 30 years without a break and just wanted to retire peacefully. But no, Mega Karen started a petition while Big Kevin organized a protest. Now, our third major player in this we shall call the Wicked Witch. The Wicked Witch, working in the shadows, starts leaking to the local paper that said restaurant owner is being forced out by the club, false allegation. The club gives their first and only statement about the situation, stating that the restaurant owner retired and even produced his retirement paperwork for proof. At this point, the national news comes into it and does an interview with the restaurant owner who states on the news he wants to retire. You would think that would be the end of it, but no. Mega Karen gets 1200 or so signatures on her petition which she hands to the club. 
The club's lawyer calls it invalid due to over 900 of the signatures not being filled in properly. Signature plus printed name plus club membership number or phone number needed by each person to make it valid. Or the same person signed multiple petition slots. So Mega Karen starts a new petition which only gets 74 signatures. Meanwhile, Big Kevin organizes a protest he doesn't show up for nor does anyone else. The club then hosts a meeting for all club members, members of the general public and the club's board to discuss what is going on. But again, for all the complaints, no one shows up. Now, Mega Karen and Big Kevin are demanding that a new meeting be held, the club's general manager be fired and the club's board be disbanded and a new board elected. The Wicked Witch then once again goes to the newspaper with a statement from the restaurant owner. Mind you, the restaurant has now been closed for over a month and states that now the club has renovated the restaurant and has plans to start a new restaurant, they, the old restaurant, would consider renting the space again. Before you question why the space wasn't renovated before this point, it was part of the Chinese restaurant's agreement that they would maintain and renovate the space as they saw fit, as stated by the club in their public statement. The Wicked Witch tells the paper that the whole reason the Chinese restaurant left wasn't because they wanted to retire but because their rent increased from the $285 a week they have paid for 28 years to $385 a week last year and then $485 a week this year for a restaurant space when other local restaurants are paying $2,500 a week plus for the same or smaller spaces. So, Big Kevin, Mega Karen and a ton of other locals were all shocked at the cost of rent. They are now all saying the rent should have been kept at the 285 to encourage the restaurant to stay, even though it meant likely closing the club since they were struggling to afford running costs. The club even broke down their running costs to show the members and locals how expensive it is to keep the place open, but still not good enough. I can't with this town anymore. Well, I guess you all know what I'm having for dinner tonight. Chinese food is awesome, but I wouldn't want to force somebody to not retire because I want to keep eating their food. If the guy wants to retire, let him retire. Don't make up false petitions and protests that nobody shows up for in order to keep him working. I don't know, but it sounds like OP's town would be perfect for a saying we have in my country. Pueblo Chico, Infierno Grande, which translates to small town, huge hell. In any case, the story doesn't end there because we do have an update, so let's continue with that. Before the update, I want to say that the restaurant owner that retired has kids, but none of them wanted the place. They've all moved on to other jobs and anyone he has tried to train just isn't good enough for the locals. Also, there is a second Chinese restaurant in town which makes this even funnier. Anyway, so our big Kevin, if you remember from the original post, had organized a protest he didn't show up to. Well, ladies, gentlemen and thems, he has now organized a meeting for October 31st for all paying members of the club. The following was taken directly from the posters around town and his Facebook post. Quote, this meeting is to discuss the removal of the president and board of directors and elect an interim board to move forward with plans to reinstate Danny's Kitchen to catering. I can't with these people, honestly. When this meeting takes place, the new restaurant will be open in the club. All cards on the table, I do have a job in the new kitchen, so I'll be the first to admit I could be looking at this with a bias. However, the owner of Danny's did retire and I don't think a vote overturns retirement. If they got enough votes, then I suppose an offer could be made to him, but he can't be forced back. I also found out the owner tried to train multiple people to take over, but every time the same people complaining now put in complaints to the club about the quality of the food. There's no way to please these people, honestly. The club's general manager is hoping that once the new restaurant opens, people will enjoy the food and move on from Danny's. Man, some people just have too much free time on their hands. Maybe online training would help them out. That's a win-win. They don't bother the rest of people and they learn something. In any case, for me, the bottom line of this whole post is that, again, Chinese food rocks. Thanks so much for sharing, OP. Take care. 
And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.